truly, Lord. We're mindful, oh Lord, and we over not look your many blessings from day to day and your mercies on this day and above all your grace upon us individually and collectively because you love us all saved and unsaved we know that there are many who share and take from your word and twist it and bend it and turn it into cultish type messages oh lord but we thank you oh lord for keeping us your children in christ jesus unified oh lord we pray for those father that go out through the lands oh lord especially lands where they hate your message they reject your message oh lord they refuse to hear it and some go to their death some go to torture and imprisonment lord we pray for them, oh Lord, put your grace in a double way as you did with Elijah, uh, in a special way right now, in the name of Jesus upon them, oh Lord. Whisper to them and let them know you never leave them nor forsake them, oh Lord, and you're with them, that you're proud of them, oh Lord, to keep toiling for the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, and for many others to be saved in that land. We pray, Father, for the body of Christ, oh Lord, here and throughout the world. Uh, that you have given your children a message on this day, one sanctuary after another in the streets, in the prisons, the highways and byways, and that many surrendered to Jesus Christ on this day, Lord, because that's what alone interests you, that you can redeem us through Christ Jesus, Father. We pray that the heavens are praising proudly, O oh Lord, because more surrendered than yesterday, more surrendered to Jesus Christ than last Sunday, O oh Lord, and no matter how much the world amps up in evil, more and more continue to be saved, O oh Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you overlook the evil in this world, O oh Lord. And that you hold back, O oh Lord. You have a, a magnificent and perfect forbearance, O oh Lord, upon mankind, O oh Lord. And you give us this time to get right with you and pray that somebody at this hour has been drawn by you to Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, and him crucified and resurrected. And before this hour is up, they surrender to Jesus Christ. They no longer have to ask, what must I do to be saved? Uh, let them hear, O oh Lord. Uh, let them listen uh, to the rhythm of your message, O oh Lord, of, that's wrapped in your love, O oh Lord, specifically aimed at them, O oh Lord, and that they surrender to Jesus Christ at this hour, O oh Lord. We pray that some who have surrendered be drawn to this message, O oh Lord, like the prodigal. Come back, O oh Lord, and stay there, O oh Lord, and continue to walk with you and be restored, O oh Lord, to their rightful place in the body of Christ. We pray for the body of Christ, O oh Lord, that uh, many, uh, many schisms, O oh Lord, there are many, there's much bickering and much division and dissension, O oh Lord, much uh, jockeying for power, O oh Lord, but we pray that you can Give it and infuse, you can infuse it with a little more of your peace, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, so that moving forward, we can be that one body more united than separated, O oh Lord, and more focused, O oh Lord, than unglued. Uh, we pray for the young, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. I give a special thanks, O oh Lord, to all the mothers, O oh Lord, who are. Uh, double thanks to those that are not for the unfortunate reasons, and especially one to those that are scheduled to be, O oh Lord, uh, that they be empowered with your grace, O oh Lord, and given what's needed, O oh Lord, to bring the young ones down the road of righteousness with Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, so that uh, generations to come can do a little more in Christ Jesus and less in the world, O oh Lord. We pray for the elders, O oh Lord, of this world. Pray for Archbishop uh, Alonzo J. Johnson and my mother, O oh Lord. I pray for my aunties, O oh Lord, and all those who are afflicted with many medical ailments, O oh Lord, of many sorts, O oh Lord, of many combinations, that you can speak a word of healing, O oh Lord, upon their bodies, from their minds down to the sole of their feet, O oh Lord, and let them feel your presence. Let them hear your, your voice, O oh Lord, but let them, as the wind, we not know when it comes, but when it does come, they can feel that gentle breeze of healing, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. 
uh, lift them up a little bit more at this hour, O oh Lord, as uh, the centurion soldier uh, went back and found, and uh, the nobleman went back, and on his way, he was told that uh, his son was healed, he'll live. And let it be at this hour, O oh Lord, of power in your word, that in the name of Jesus, they too, throughout the world, feel a little bit better. Uh, those that are homeless, those in jail, oh Lord, those that are out of their minds, those that are doing all sorts of things, oh Lord, that please you not, oh Lord. Uh, whisper through a gentle breeze in their footsteps right now, oh Lord, that there is a better way and that that way is your way because you love them. In the name of Jesus, we pray over this message, this theme of surrender, oh Lord. And I, of course, again, ask that somebody else surrender at this hour to Jesus Christ. We thank you and love you. And we say, amen, amen, amen. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> One more time. Thank you, Lord. I got to smile. I'm just so happy to be here. Uh, I'd like to thank God the Father who has made this happen. God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Israel's Messiah and the Savior of the world, my personal Lord and Savior. And of course, I gotta smile when I say, and copy down, God the Holy Spirit, the captain of the second, and of course, last Ark of Grace, the body of Christ, who leads it on the waters of life, no matter how high the tide. Oh, how bottom down it goes, to the left or right, uh, whether it's a little light or in total darkness, chaos, looks like destruction, water flowing in, we're sinking, uh, we, hear, we, we look like we're at wit's end, does not matter because by faith, I believe in the Lord and that he will carry me through, see me through each and every storm as he does the body of Christ day in and day out as it is attacked by Satan and his army. Uh, all the arsenal and tools that he has does not stop El Capitan from moving forward because God's word doesn't stay still. His plan does not stay still. His salvation, eternal life, it's the, 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 the path to that, it does not stay still, does not go backwards or sideways, or park in the sidelines. It moves forward to the seashores of glory to be with the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. In eternal glory. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. I'd like to thank Dr. Thomas for once again allowing me to be here and uh, say hello to my mama and the rest of my family. Uh, a little a uh, special uh, hello to uh, Talia Hannah and another one to Hannah Rudder down in Texas. I uh, love you all. love all the kids. And i um, like to say I was at a gathering. It was a science fair for kids uh, yesterday over at uh, Urban Scholar in Inglewood off of Van Ness right before Manchester. They did it at Kelso, uh, I think it's a junior high or high school in Inglewood. Um, we well, seen some incredible projects that these kids put together and the good work that uh, that program is doing. And I'd just like to, in the name of Jesus, Father, put your special blessing over those children and children like that throughout the world, oh Lord, especially in this country, because we need them. Uh, but most importantly, in Christ Jesus to lift this country up to be a true beacon of light for Christ Jesus. So uh, my prayer is that the parents are led and that they lead their kids to Christ Jesus, to walk with Christ Jesus, and to serve Christ Jesus because they surrender to him Surrender to the Holy Spirit. And that is the true scientific, uh, what's that? The true scientific uh, equation uh, to what's needed 
this country and throughout the world. That is the true, uh, uh, what did they do? They did, a, they did a research, okay? And they came to a conclusion in each one of their researches. And my prayer is that these kids uh, are led to search out Christ, surrender to Christ, and that their research of Christ Jesus leads them to say one thing. There is no name down here on earth by which any man or woman can be saved except Jesus Christ. Amen. Anyway, uh, we've been embarking on part, we're going to be embarking on part six on the theme of surrender. And just a quick snippet as I try to do, uh, led by the Spirit once a week. Uh, part one, back on, uh, we started at April 16th, uh, was based off of Jeremiah 29, verses 10 through 13. And it basically opened up that there is a spiritual pollution that has traveled from Adam's fall, uh, from man's fall through what Adam did in the garden, Genesis 3, all the way up to this present time and moving forward. And that spiritual pollution is called sin. We know that Romans 5.12 says that by one man's sin, which was Adam, okay, for all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory and that there are none good, okay? But there is a gift that God has given us, and that is Christ Jesus, and thank you, Lord, for that. But that spiritual pollution of sin uh, through the ages has revealed one thing, that man has declared war on God. And uh, in Jeremiah 29 the war of sin that the Israel, that nation of Israel continued upon uh, against God led them to be held captive, taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon when he be, uh, see, uh, laid uh, uh, his hands upon Jerusalem and carried out the majority of them and exiled them to the kingdom of Babylon, spread them throughout. And what it showed was that that was the problem. God, thank you, Lord, revealed that he has a plan, and we know that he has a plan before the foundations of the earth that carry through their time, through our time, and moving forward. And that plan is that he loves you, and he wants to redeem you uh, by surrendering, uh, by faith upon Jesus Christ, dying for your sins, being buried, and on the third day, uh, resurrected bodily. And that is his plan, and that he, uh, knowing the problem, he revealed through the letter of Jeremiah to the people exiled that in 70 years, uh, their captivity will be over. And we right now have the opportunity that not 70 years from now, but right now, which is the acceptable time to be freed from our captivity as a sinner in need of a savior. And that uh, God laid this promise down that if we uh, uh, call out to him, and invite him to come, you know, and we come to him that if we do so, seeking him with a, uh, an immediate felt need. And in today's time, Jesus needs to be that immediate felt need, the number one need in our life. If we seek Jesus in that way, calling him out, inviting him to come into our life and surrendering to him with a heart that surrenders, then we'd be saved. And he was promising the Israelites that if they did it this way, that the time of restoration would come upon them. And in part two, we learn in Romans 1.18, we, we see that in one, we wage war against God because of the spiritual pollution of sin. But then we wanted to start uh, being led by the Holy Spirit as to why won't we surrender? Why do we continue in this war? And one of the reasons in uh, part two was that we love to suppress the truth. God's word is not something that we want in our life of sin. We hunger and thirst for our wants and our desires. And that is the flesh in this den of darkness, in this cemetery of death that we uh, tread upon here uh, in this life. We don't want to deal with the light. We don't want to come to the light, which is life. And that is through Jesus Christ. We hunger and thirst for what we want and not what God says in truth, what we need. And then in part three, 
we continued in Romans 1.18, and the Lord led us to another reason why we won't refuse, why we refuse and reject to give in, and that is because uh, we not only suppressed the truth in the prior week, okay, but now regarding the truth of us being a sinner uh, in need of Jesus Christ the Savior, as truth said that we suppressed last in the prior week in part two, we plead the fifth. We ain't got nothing to say. So we don't want to incriminate ourselves. Okay? And then that's not enough for us. So in our sinful state, we desire to seek a continuance. We, we tell God, you know what? Mum is our lips. Let's, let's deal with this at another time. Because according to last week, I have a hunger and a thirst for a specific life. And that doesn't involve you. That doesn't concern you. And that is not something that I need uh, for me to complete in this life, okay? I'm about me, myself and I, my wants, okay? My, 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 me, myself and I, okay? And then uh, that's not working as a sinner. And, you know, we keep feeling this, this, you know, you got to get right. You, you this, you that. You know what, God, let's do this. I want a motion to suppress the evidence. Now, the week prior, we want to suppress the truth. Now we just want the truth about his word that speaks to us as to, we're a sinner in need of a savior. Well, regarding the sinner in need of a savior, I want a motion to suppress all the evidence and have this case of me being a sinner in need of yo and your son, the savior, through the Holy Spirit, thrown out. Because I got things to do. I got a life to lead. And then in part four, we continued on the theme of why we won't surrender. Okay, we see that in two, we suppress truth. In three, we want to just suppress the evidence. OK, we, the truth being God's or the evidence, we're a sinner. And then in three, selfishness. We are self. We have a selfish nature that God gives us a direction to go to. We flee the opposite way. He tells us exactly where do we to be. We want to go and not be found. Uh, he gives us a purpose. OK, and that is to have an opportunity uh, of his grace of salvation and to use us as he tried to use Jonah, okay, at the beginning uh, in Jonah 1 when he gave him the message to be a blessing to those that are in need of his salvation, to be right with him. And we desire, you know what, because of our selfishness, to hell with them. Let them be cursed. Let them be judged. Let them be damned. Let them go to hell. That's how we feel, okay, in our selfish state. It's about me getting mine. Okay, yeah, I like your grace, I like your mercy, this forgiveness thing is good, but going to tell somebody else, nah, I got to get mine. So that's uh, part four. And then in part five, and then one thing about four that stood out was that as Christians, or even a non Christian, if someone is not saved, okay, the word ministry stands out, okay, when we refuse to be used by God to help another person. OK, uh, you know, more aimed at Christians, uh, help another person come to Jesus Christ. OK, then we place their lives in jeopardy and we also place blessings in our life in jeopardy. Maybe we need when we self if we take some time out to self examine through, and with the Holy Spirit in our life, he may reveal to us that one of the reasons we're in the situation and condition we're in as a Christian is because we've never surrendered to the Holy Spirit to be used. Or maybe we did and we just refuse to be used to help others dying in their sins. OK, and we place in their lives in jeopardy and we also negating our blessings. OK, in part five last week. We continued on why we won't surrender, and we know that in part two, we suppress the truth. In part three, we suppress the evidence. In part four, there's a selfishness factor. And in part five, we went into the book of Judges, okay, and we seen influences was a big issue. We didn't get into the book of Judges because the Lord gave me a, a, a little umbrella, mini umbrella to put over this, and it was based out of Deuteronomy chapter seven, the first seven verses. And a couple of key things that stood out there was, one, God informed them not to intermarry. Uh, the Israelites, just like Christians today, are uh, what you call the bride, okay? We are be wedded to the Lord, okay? 
and they were to be bewedded to the Lord God. Okay? They were not to take their children and, and, and marry the other, anyone from the other surrounding pagan nations, okay, or allow those pagan nations' children to intermarry with the children of Israel, okay? Why? Because the influences from the surrounding nations, and God is showing us something that, uh, look at your life right now and see what influences do you have around you. Uh, God gave me this illustration years ago. Put a dot in the middle of a paper, and everyone that you know, you put a dot going around you, that dot in the middle. And when you complete it by everyone that you know, okay, draw an arrow to them. You'll be there for each person at their wit's end, at their, at their darkest moment. And then the Lord shows, okay, well, who will be there for you if you are in the condition you're in right now? You are at a really heavy point in your life, a dark point a hurting point, maybe a lonesome point, a, a point of guilt, a point of abandonment, point of loneliness, low self-worth, low self-esteem. Uh, you've been uh, abused and neglected and taken advantage of, lied to, deceited, cheated on. Uh, you're going through a, a turbulent relationship, uh, one that's just ended, one that you know is going to end. Uh, you try to make you try to make things work out and you know it's not going to work out. You're putting up with it. You're putting out, you're putting up, but you're not getting anything in return. I mean, the story goes on and on and on. OK. Look around. What are the influences that are around your life right now? And if you have uh, given to them. And you find yourself lost more questions and answers, more stress than being blessed, okay? Not having Jesus in the pardon of your sins or not knowing if, not not sure that you do or not knowing how you do, okay? And you turn to other areas, other people, okay, in your life to try to keep things going right and, and you just, you're ready to give up. You're at the point where I'm ready to surrender. I, I need something new and you're hearing right now that is Jesus Christ, okay, that is that something new. Ask yourself, all the inf all the people you have, everything you got around your life, has it influenced you to surrender to Jesus Christ? Uh, open up your heart and tell him, uh, I humble myself, take over, and surrender to the Holy Spirit. Teach me and train me. Transform my mind, transfigure my soul, okay, uh, to bring you glory and use me to be a blessing to others to come to you. If we're not living that life, then chances are that we have bewedded ourselves not to the Father of lights, the Almighty Father, uh, the Father of the nation of Israel, and Father over the body of Christ, uh, not God the Father. Uh, we have be wedded ourselves to the God of this world, this age, okay? And that is Satan himself, okay? Uh, get out of the body of Satan and get into the body of Christ, okay? Because when you, uh, be, you, you pledge your allegiance, you, you become one with Satan, you, you, you know, uh, say, you know what? This is the life I want to lead. Well, what you've done, you've turned from God the Father, okay, and you've turned to serve false gods because Satan is not the true and living God. The true and living God is in heaven. The false gods are all, uh, Satan, he's been casted out of heaven because of what he's done ages ago, okay. His time is up. The jig is up on him. His time is coming. He's already been judged, as Jesus said, okay. But it causes us to turn from God, and when we turn from God, we turn from the blessings that God has starting with Jesus Christ so that we can have peace with him and through the Holy Spirit learn of his peace and journey towards eternal peace with God. We, we turn from all that. And, and it not only hurts us, but it hurts us from being used to help all those in our family and around us in our life to come to Jesus Christ. So we turn from God and we turn to serve false gods. Okay? But God, thank you, O Lord, 
so loving, so gracious, so merciful, okay? Informed the nation of Israel in Deuteronomy 7, uh, verses 11 through 15, if they are willing to keep in their heart God's word, and follow him and follow his and follow his uh, his follow and obey his commandments. OK, if they were willing to listen. OK, and make his word one in their heart and live it out. He promised to love them in a, in a special way that he wants to love them, to bless them, to heal and deliver them to victory over all enemies. OK. And. Israel was to be the most blessed nation on earth. They were to be a beacon of light, of hope to all the other pagan nations on earth. Okay? And they were to recall from Egypt, the Red Sea, the wilderness, the entry into the promised land, all the victorious battles. Okay? To assure them, you know what? If we continue to go and, and, and trust and obey God and faithfully live it out, okay, pass it to our children, then we live in victory. Why? And then the second part of this was in verse 25 of Deuteronomy where it says they were not to covet. Number one thing that man covets is that almighty dollar. They were not to covet the silver or the gold. They were not to covet and, 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 and give in to uh, thirst and hunger for false gods, okay? Why are influences around us and that coveting an issue? Because it ensnares us, it traps us, it brings the people back to part one of this thing, Jeremiah 29, in captivity, okay? When we allow the influences of our life to turn us from the opportunities to be blessed from Almighty God, the true and living God, okay, and we turn to the false gods, we become ensnared. Once Satan has you fall, he's done with you. He don't need you. He leaves you be, okay? Sin traps us. It will not allow us to be free, okay? The law was meant to reveal that we have a sin factor and we are trapped. That's why Jesus, I believe it's John 12, talked to the people about being free. And they felt that because they were children of Abraham, they were free. They're not in prison. They're not in captivity to anything. Okay? But what Jesus is trying to point out to them that hey, Abraham ain't the Savior. Abraham ain't the Messiah. You might be known as the father of the nation, but I am the father above all, okay? God is the father above all. He was trying to send down a message from the father that he's the father of it all. Abraham's the father of the nation, but he is the father of it all, okay? And they just felt they were free because that esteemed privilege of coming down through the line of Abraham. OK, but sin had them trapped. And the God of this age, Satan, will blind you to the reality of that truth. OK, that's the number one thing about the influence of Satan. He will blind you after he uh, leads you astray. OK, and let me let me take this back after he presents. OK, what looks like blessings to your life. And you make the decision, free choice, to entertain it. Well, once you become ensnared by it, you're back to Jeremiah 21. You're in captivity, okay? And anyone that does not have Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, I say this as truth because I love you. You are still captive. You are not free. You are in prison. You are in de on death row right now, waiting for your moment when God says, time's up, lights out, breathe your last, hit flat line, and on the other side, you will find yourself by yourself.
and to yourself. Because you desire to live this life for self and not for God Almighty. So, Jesus in Matthew 6, 24 said, again, speaking of truth, because that's what God's word is. No man can serve two masters. Okay? You're either going to, you're going to love one and hate the other. Or you're going to hate one and love the other. But you cannot serve them both. You cannot put your heart in 100% allegiance to two different gods. Okay? You either love God the Father and hate Satan. Or love Satan and hate God the Father. Okay? So, uh, these were snippets of the first five parts. And uh, moving along. Okay? God gave me a couple of points before we go into uh, Judges. Um, One was in Exodus. In Exodus 19, verse 4, we see that God tells Moses that the people have witnessed what he did to the Egyptians. Recall it now. Check it out. Okay? Because this is the generation that witnessed it okay in verse 5 he mentions to them obey his voice keep his commandments okay because they are a special treasure among all the world they are a kingdom of priests they are a holy nation set apart by God and, 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 and to God and for God okay in Exodus 19, 7 and 8, simply from the elders, these are the, the trendsetters, okay, of this whole population that he brought out from Egypt. All the elders stated, we will do everything the Lord has spoken And they inform Moses, tell this to the Lord. Pretty interesting. Now, this is before we get the judges, okay? That this is taking place. Now, in the book of Judges, a couple of things that stand out. Remember, we're on the theme of surrender, but we're on the sub-theme of why don't we surrender, okay? And we know that we've been journeying on the last several weeks that one of the reasons we don't surrender is because we refuse and reject it. We refuse and reject to surrender to God and his salvation found in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We refuse it and reject it. Now, back then, they didn't have the crucifixion yet, okay? They had God's promise, okay? But uh, we, bringing it up to 2023, we refuse and reject to surrender to God and his salvation through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look what it says here, okay? In Judges 2, verses 16 through 23, just a quick snippet. You know, God had, God's love never changes because he doesn't change. It's it's prevalent through every book in the Bible, okay? You see love, okay? God's grace and mercy, his compassion streams from this, okay? And every time Israel backslid, God raised what was known as a judge, someone for that time frame to help redirect and deliver the people to be restored by God because of his grace because of his love for them casting his grace and mercy upon them okay so he would do that things would chilly mo but then all of a sudden they go back to their old ways okay and this just seemed to be a 
repetitive situation. Now, when you get to the book of Judges, one key thing that did occur was that the generation of the Moses era, the Joshua era, and the original elders, it dies off. I think that's in uh, Judges 2, you see, where it says, a new generation. One that did not know about it, the, the, pe the, the nations passed from Egypt uh, through the plagues, the, deliver the deliverance, the Red Sea, the wilderness, the battles. Uh, they didn't see none of these moments of victory. Okay. This generation rose up. Okay. You know, we see that today. The new generation of today, how they have risen up. No knowledge of the yesteryears. Yeah, it might be in your conscience, right and wrong. And you see the results of it, okay? How they have a kind of similarity to this issue in Judges, okay? And in Judges 17, 6, and I believe it's 21, 25, it spoke that in those days, in the time of the judges, there was no king, okay? And the people did what they thought was right in their own eyes. Live for me, myself and I. Do for me, get for me. Lie, cheat, steal, you know, bamboozle, come up. Do whatever I got to do because it seemed right in my eyes. Seemed good to me. Okay? Come up, but don't come too. Stay down here. Not focused up there. Okay? They did what was right in their own eyes. The people lived according to the flesh. That They didn't live they didn't ain't to live holy. They, they didn't live to be that light. They became influenced. We saw that in the past uh, in the past uh, story last week, okay? And, and they coveted that which influenced them, okay? And they started looking more like the pagan nations. They shamed the holiness of God, the deliverance that God brought upon this nation up to this point. So much that the other surrounding nations would look and, you know what? What's so special about them? They're acting and they look like us. They're clicking with us. They're, 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 they're intermarrying with us. Okay? They're doing business with us. They're living with us. We're living with them. What's so special about them? You follow me? And that's why as Christians, we got to be careful about influences. Okay, what we have around us, we got to be careful about what we covet. Now that's that's the one commandment that's from the inside. Okay, that's the dangerous one. You know, it lurks within us, and, and and you know we have to be careful. You know, what we covet, we should be coveting God's word, God's will. We should be coveting that redemption, that love. He had for us, you no, know, want that for them. That that's what I search after. That's what I hunger and thirst after. Okay, but the people did what they thought was right in their own eyes. They led. They lived by the flesh. Okay, and the results we see here, Judges one. Okay, we're continuing on this influence topic. Okay. In Judges 1, we see that the majority of the tribes, there were 12 tribes, and the majority of them refused. Remember we said one of the reasons that we don't surrender, I mean, that why we don't surrender, it says because we refuse and reject to do so. We refuse and reject to surrender. And here in Judges 1, you see that the majority of the tribes of Israel, okay, refused to obey God. God instructed them to wipe out the enemy once they conquered them down to the last animal. 
leave nothing alive. Okay? But they refused not only to do that, but they also decided to come up a little bit. Remember, we're talking about a, a time where it says they had no leadership. Okay? Well, God was their king. Okay? But they they didn't even they refused to even obey God. The same true and living God who got them, their ancestors, out from Egypt and through the and through that generation the blessings that they have right now the opportunity they have right now the true and living God they have right now okay is the results and they refused they rejected it to obey that God okay and his instructions to wipe out the enemy and not only did they not wipe them out but they decided I need to get rich. I need to get paid. You ain't paying me, God. Hold on. You, you want me to work for you. You want me to do this for you and that for you. What do I get out of this? Ooh, where, where's mine at? My plate is empty. I, I, you know what? I need something. I got some shopping to do. I got some bills to pay. I got a car note. I got rent or a mortgage. The kids this, the kids that. I want to go out. I need some new threads. I got to look good. I need a little makeover. I know I got 50 pairs of shoes. I need another pair for the weekend. You know, uh, I'm not looking right. I need to go get straightened out. And then I need to go hang out a little bit. You want me to do all this for you? I need to get paid. That's our nature. Okay, now, they kept, they accepted the tribute, the cheddar, the money from the Canaanites. Wasn't even supposed to be Canaanites there because he told my out. But our evil against God is to the point that we will allow certain things to occur in our life that displease God because it pleases us and it pays us. You know, there's a lot of ministries going around teaching, getting paid, looking good, feeling good, shopping, and this and that, and traveling, and, and investments, and, and property, and, and money, 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 money. That shows that you're a child of God. That shows how God loves you with his favor over you and, and all how special you are to him. Hogwash. What God wants to bless you with is to transform your mind to think and have the mind of Jesus Christ. To say no to these influences. To say no to this coveting. Okay? To say no to the God of this world and all these other false gods of the world. Okay? And to say yes to God and his will. Okay, no matter how bad it gets, you do a garden of Gethsemane where Jesus said, nevertheless, your will be done. No matter how bad it gets, you're still focused in mind and heart and in spirit and soul and your body up on, the, up on God the Father. Okay, in his will. Trusting him and obeying him to the last, to the last tittle. Okay, to the last letter to the, uh, uh, of his word, you will trust him and obey him. Okay? But these people of Israel decided, nah, it's not in our best interest right now to, you know, we'll get back to you. You know what I'm saying? They changed their number. They moved. They put a change of address in the post office. Okay? They went bug wild and got wild. Okay? to do for self, okay? So they refused to obey God. And we won't obey God unless we trust God. So that we can take a step back and say, they refused to trust and obey God, okay? And what he commanded, and then on top of that, 
They pulled out their own commandments. Uh, you Canaanites, thou shalt pay us. Because this guy ain't paying us. We, we need to get paid. Okay? In Judges 2, it says, uh, they refused and rejected to obey him. Okay? And we talked about how, now you know, Moses been gone. Joshua recently gone. All the elders, the original elders, they're gone. And this new generation. Okay? You know, if you go into the uh, into the times of Egypt, uh, when you seen that Pharaoh in Joseph's time die, and the new Pharaoh, which eventually was the Pharaoh that God dealt with, okay, he knew not of Israel, the, the Hebrews' God, okay? He knew not of what went on with how the former Pharaoh uh, had a little, you know, uh, what am I say, uh, a little mercy, a little favor upon the Hebrews. He knew not of that. And the results were disastrous. And these people here knew not of the great times in their small Let's just say small time in small existence, okay? And in Judges 2, 3 and 10, we see something that Scripture says, The people did evil before the Lord. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. Now, One thing that the Lord shows us is we will amp up in evil. You know, this was kind of symbolic of how they were in Genesis 6, around Noah's time. Continuously evil and wicked in all their ways. There's a lot of people war. But man, there must have been something special because after God had did everything he did for this nation to get them to this point, I think that's what took it up a little notch, okay? The investment that God put in, the time he put in, and, and, and his glory, how it was manifested, okay? This is what they did with it, okay? And it said the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. You know, when we turn from God... And we turn to the world, the result will be the production of evil, the production of disobedience, sin. Okay? We saw that in part one of this theme, the spiritual pollution known as sin. Okay? It will amp up so much in our life. And this is a nation now we're talking about. Okay? Amped up so much. Okay? The smog factor was of sin was so bad, it blinded them. It, it, it contaminated them. Okay, it made them absolutely unhealthy because of the sin factor. Okay, but what was a couple of things that made the people be classified? In the manner that they were. Well, we see one, they refused to obey him in chapter one. They refused and rejected him in chapter two. Okay. And look what it says here in Judges 2, verses 12. It said, They forsook God to pursue and worship, or to pursue and bow down, surrender to. The false gods. Okay? So when we become influenced by evil, and you know that Judas was being influenced by, by Satan, by evil, okay? And it wasn't until it entered his heart, okay? It says when Satan entered his heart, that's when he, Jesus said, go do what you got to go do. Okay? So we see that 
turning from God because we're so influenced by Satan. We got to be careful because that can lead to the entry of Satan into our heart and the coveting, having the eyes of Satan, okay, and coveting being a mirror image of Satan and his desires, okay? You gotta be careful. These people totally, totally turned from everything, okay? They turned completely away from God. And you know what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24? If you turn from God, the true and living God, then you're turning to Satan. Ain't but two gods. Okay? And they decided to turn to the false gods of that, of that time. Okay? And not only turn to them, and not only uh, uh, follow them, but to surrender to them. So when we turn from God, okay, Three things that can happen will be after being influenced so much by this world, the people, the, 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 the things of the world, okay? It can make us turn from God and the true and living God into the false God here, Satan, okay? And we'll turn to him. We will follow him. And in following him, we're listening to him. We've got our eyes fixed on him. Okay? And she said, we're supposed, to be, we're supposed to belong to Jesus and, and, and hear his voice. And we'll hear his, the one of this world's voice. Okay? We'll, we'll, we'll turn to him. We'll follow him. Okay? We'll bow down. And worship to him and serve him. Okay? So we must be careful with the influences we have around us because it will lead us to having a foundation of not coveting God's word and will, but coveting Satan's word and will. Oh, he has a word for you, okay? We will covet. We will pursue. We will walk with. We will fellowship with, okay? We will engage with. We will learn from. We will grow from, okay? And we will serve Satan. And you know what? Sad to say, there are many Christians today they say they're Christian. Like Jesus said of the Pharisees, they appear to look like a Christian, sound like a Christian, and walk like a Christian. Okay? But in their heart, they're children of their father, the devil, as Jesus said. Don't, don't get mad at me. Look at the word. He told the nation that they wouldn't listen to him. Follow me. They're not tuning in. Okay? They're not willing to give in and surrender. And that's because they belonged to the children, their father, of their father, the devil. Okay? So check yourself. Okay? I only got a few more minutes here. So I'm going to put a pause on this one until next week with the Lord's will. Okay? And simply state that, yes, we have sin lurking within us. If you don't have Jesus, you are classified as a sinner. You need Jesus Christ to save you from your sins so that you can have peace with God. You know, when you surrender, you humble yourself and surrender, and you say, okay, Lord, I'm a sinner. I recognize what I have done. I recognize that now my walk is not as you said. I'm not surrendered to you. I'm not 
and engaging and fellowshipping with you. I'm not becoming more like you. Uh, I've been a bad role model in my home, my family, my community. Everywhere I go, I've not shined you. So I want to surrender to you. I, I hear what you got to say. I have bad influences in my life. They've caused my life to be absolute mess, but I want your best. So I surrender to the best, Jesus Christ, right now, because I know you died for me up on that cross. You died for my sins. You took my sins to the cross. You bled it out. You were buried. And on the third day, you rose bodily, the three Bs. You bled, you buried, and you, and you rose bodily. And I believe that. And, and I surrender to you, O oh Lord Jesus. And I ask that you uh, come into my heart take over my life and through the Holy Spirit teach me and train me to be more like you by transforming my mind to say no to these influences and yes to you and your word and will and transfigure my spirit and soul so that it can be shining your glory oh Lord transfigure me like you were transfigured so that when people look at me they see you oh Lord nothing but you because it's it's you and me that matters so that others can come to you. Uh, I surrender, Lord. I truly surrender and, and I bow down. Please save me, Lord Jesus, from my sins. I surrender. If you have that in your heart, it's the most immediate felt need. You're seeking him right now because you realize the influences in your life, people, events, everything that's taking place in your life has you in one place. A sinner heading to hell. And you want peace with God. You know that you don't have peace in your life. Peace within you. And you know that God can give you that. And you surrender to it. Now you got peace with God. But to have the peace of God. So that people can see it. You can introduce it into their life. Into your relationship. Into your marriage with your kids. And everywhere else. You got to grow. Stay tuned here. I'm Pastor Joseph from the Lighthouse. God's will, I'm here every Sunday, okay? Uh, week by week, day by day, okay? You can email me. We can chop it up. I can even direct you to, you know, resources and even other pastors and other ministries, okay? To grow. And as you grow, peace grows in you. Joy grows in you. Above all, love grows in you, okay? And that is all found from God through the Holy Spirit by surrendering to Jesus Christ. So if you've done that, thank you. Welcome to the family of Christ. Uh, like I said, email me your name and number. I'll be more than happy to touch base, visit, meet with you, give you some more information, more assurance. Uh, but stay tuned here because I truly love you. In the depth of my heart, I love you. I do this because I love you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, love you also. God loves you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Bless your name that someone has crossed over. Someone has come back. Someone has surrendered, oh Lord, to Jesus Christ. And that the heavens are praising as we do. Keep them here, Father. Bring them back here and raise them up. Let their story bring you 